Well, well, we're back. Now, response on the last video was pretty good. So this time, we're gonna take the full fat duct and slam it. Welcome back to Striking FPV R&D. My name's Ashton, and today I'm gonna be designing a slammed duct for a Cloud 149 Sitterwoop. Now, there are two ways I'm gonna go about doing this. The first method is by designing from scratch, and the second method is to take an existing full duct design and modify it to slam it. Now, if you wanna see the whole process from start to finish, then just keep watching. But if you wanna see how to modify the design from the previous video, then you can use the chapter markers down below to skip ahead. So, let's get started. And we're back in Fusion 360. Now, before I continue, the last video, I did a lot of measuring work with the calipers. And in this video, I'm not gonna do all of that because I still have all of those measurements in my head. So, let's just get started. So, first things first, we got to click on a sketch, create a new sketch and select the side plane because we're going to do the revolve thing again. We click on the line tool, select the center of the sketch, draw it outwards and the inner diameter was 78 millimeters. Uh, this has to be a radius so I'll type in divided by 2 into the box and we get 39, very nice. Now the total height of the duct was 30 so I'm going to type that in. Now here's the thing, the slam duct doesn't need to be 30. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna measure one that I already created, that's kind of convenient. And that is 17 millimeters thick, which is nice. Now when you do your own, you best use the bottom of the calipers to uh, work out how far the actual prop is from the base plate. And from that you can know how high or how short you have to make your duct. But anyway, so 17 is mine. So I'm gonna go in and we're going to draw to the right first. Another thing, thickness is crucial. Because it's slammed, it's a thinner duct, you might want to make the duct actually a little bit thicker. So in this case, instead of two millimeters, I'm going to make the duct about 2.5 millimeters, just to be safe. And we draw another line downwards, 17 millimeters long. Draw the rest of it back in and then use the trim tool, the little scissors up here, to then delete the first line that I created so that we're left with just the base shape. Let's click Finish Sketch on the view cube up to a funny angle and select the shape that we just made, press Revolve, and then select the vertical axis to spin that shape around and create our slam duct, which now just looks like a ring like the last time. So, back to the timeline over here, double click the sketch and we get to now modify this design a bit. Here's the thing, because it's slammed and it's a little bit uh, weaker than the last design, I do want to reinforce it a touch and one of the ways I will do that is by adding extra thick bit at the bottom. Let's just make that one millimeter thick and then we're going to draw upwards another two millimeters and then the last bit, we're gonna go up and join the rest of it at a 45 degree angle. Now, if this is 180, so if you press tab to get into the angle uh, control, we're gonna type in 135, and there we go. So that's locked it. Oh, no, it didn't. 135, there we go, now it's locked it. And you'll see that I'll, you know, I can draw the line as long as I want, and it'll always be locked at 135. I'm gonna find a point along here, Click, and there we go, we've got our little bottom lip bit. Click the trim tool to remove the line that was originally there, and now we've got this shape. Uh, going back to the top, now we've got to create the lip design. And once again, we're remembering our 45 degree angle rule. So I'm gonna draw a line downward, two millimeters long. From that point, we're gonna draw upward, Press tab, type in 45 to lock the angle and then connect it to the top there. Very good. Let's draw another line across by two millimeters. And the same deal, we'll just draw from here. This is another way to do it. Four, we'll type in six and then connect these two like so. Use the trim tool once again to remove 
some of the lines that we created. There we go. You might have to click multiple times depending if you've drawn multiple lines because you can draw lines over themselves. And there we go. We've now got our basic uh, shape. However, I know this is not that thick because if you look here, our cross section is what? 2.5 millimeters thick. And if I measure this, it's only two. So in that case, I've got to add at least another 0.5, but I'm going to add one because extra strength. And we're going to draw that across to here. And now once again, trim tool, the little scissors, delete that line, delete that line. And now we're starting to get a much thicker shape up there. The final thing worth doing is filleting. So again, 45 degree angles. I cannot uh, smooth these top edges, but I can smooth these ones. So I'm going to click that and let's just type in 0.5. What about one? Will that work? One works. Click OK. We'll fill it this bottom edge as well. Type in one. Oh, too much. 0 0.5. There we go. 0 0.5. OK. We'll fill it this inner edge by one. Yeah, that looks nice. We'll do that by one. And the final edge, this one, we're going to do that by five. Now I'll briefly explain how the fillet tool actually works. What is this mysterious number? It's actually the radius of the circle that makes up the curve. So if I type in one, you'll see this little center point appears here. And that is one millimeter away from the curve. So if you imagine a whole circle, that's one millimeter radius or two millimeter diameter. Uh, if I type in two, that center has now moved here. If I type in five, that center is now over at this point. So that's how the fillet tool actually works. So with five, press enter. I now have somewhat of a satisfying shape. You'll notice how thick it is at the top. And that's really good for strength if you're going to hit something because Cinewoop, indoor flying ducts and everything, then that top edge is now quite thick and really strong. And the same thing goes for the bottom because I've added that extra bit of support there. And hopefully you're not really going to be impacting the middle section, although 2.5 millimeters is pretty thick for that. So once I'm satisfied with that, we're going to click finish sketch. And immediately you can see that it's, you know, updated the revolve tool, revolve function, and we have ourselves a nice, a nice funny looking ducty ring. So that's all good. Now, pro tip from the last video, I had a commenter named Sam Richard, and he told me that there's a more convenient way to moving around the view than dragging on the view cube. And that is by holding down shift and holding the middle mouse button. And if you drag, Boom, does this. Likewise, if you don't hold shift and just middle mouse, then it pans left and right. So that's really convenient. Thank you very much, Sam. There's another tip from Sam I'm gonna show later, but we'll just keep moving on at this point. So the next step is to create the standoffs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to this folder and click on the eye to hide the body that we just created. We're gonna make a new sketch on the bottom plane and here I already remember the uh, distance that the standoffs are from the center. They're 39.75, I believe. So let's type in 39.75, but that's effectively a radius. I need a diameter, so type in multiplied by two, the asterisk on the numpad, and that gives us the full size. Next thing, we'll start with the top mounting point, which uh, is 1.7 in the center. The bolt itself uh, has a diameter of about two millimeters, not in including the thread, sorry. So if we make it 1.7, that will give it enough plastic for the uh, thread of the screw to bite into it, which is why I've chosen that. The outer size of the standoff is seven millimeters, as per the last video, so I'm type typing that in. Now the bottom of the duct actually has two standoffs and I know that they're 15 millimeters apart. So once again, I'm going to demonstrate how the dimension tool comes in handy. Let's create a circle, the standoff on the circumference of our guide circle. So 1.7 and 7. We're going to do the same over here. And once again, I'm going to do it in a really stupid position to demonstrate how the dimension tool helps us here. 
type in seven, and now we click sketch dimension. And we're gonna click on the center of that point. We're gonna click on the center of our sketch. And once again, if, if I were to move it into this position, it's the vertical distance. This is the horizontal and this is the straight line. We're gonna go horizontal. The two points are 15 millimeters apart. So from the center point, that means it's gonna be 7.5. So type in 7.5. And you'll notice that it has now slid that standoff along the circumference to move it into the correct position. Press escape. If I just drag on this one, you'll, you'll notice that it sticks to the line. So same deal. Click on it. Click on that with the, oh, that didn't work with the dimension tool and type in 7.5. And there we go. That's done. Press escape. And the only thing is to select the outer circumference, delete it and we've got our standoff points. Fantastic. Now what we can do is we can go back to a 3D view and turn on the body so that we can see how it's going to work. And I'm going to select the shapes that we just made, hold shift to select multiple, and we're going to extrude upwards towards the duct. Now here's the other thing. If I keep going up, it's going to cut into it but I don't need to go that high anyway. So I'm just gonna drag it down. We go to a side view like this. 13 is absolutely perfect to just touch and to double check the operation is joined, which means when we click OK and we check the bodies, it is a single body. We haven't created multiple bodies because it's now all one piece. So this is starting to look quite nice, I think. Now the next thing to do, we just need to make sure that the holes are there which they are not. So to bring them back, we got to open our sketches folder, unhide the second sketch, which contains these uh, bolt holes, zoom in, zoom with this scroll wheel, hold shift and select. Oh, it's finicky. The other ones, zoom out, zoom in again, hold shift and select. We've now got them selected. We're going to click extrude. And if we drag upwards, you'll see that it's doing the cut operation. It only needs to be four millimeters deep, as discussed in the last video. Hide the sketch, and there we go. Now this is the part where I say, this is now the finished duct, and we can be happy. So let's click Save, or Control S. Uh, cloud 149 mods, that's good. We're gonna call this the slammed duct. Click Save. And now it appears at the bottom over here. It's got a little loading bar because it's actually syncing to the cloud, the cloud, because Fusion 360 is connected to the cloud. All of your designs are on the cloud. Once it's saved, now we can move on. Now, the thing that I said last time is that printers are famously bad at printing in mid air. And so in that regard, we've got to fix a couple of things, but also, Strength is an issue. My concern with this particular design, and I've seen this on, on other duct designs, if it's printed out TPU, it's probably not a big deal because TPU's like indestructible. Um, once, it's, once it's printed out, it's almost impossible to break it apart by hand. You've got to like use a cutter and even then it's really hard. But if you're printing this out of anything else, this kind of standoff design means that this could easily just snap off. In fact, early designs that I've made did exactly that. So the way we're going to mitigate it is we're going to zoom in here and we're going to select these outer edges on the bottom. Hold shift to select them. Scroll, uh, scroll in there, zoom in there, select the other side, select that side. And now we're going to fillet them. So if we click the fillet tool here, 3D fillet tool. I know the height is 13, so I can type in 13. Beautiful, that worked. Press OK, and now you see what I've actually done here. I've created this support structure, which is really smooth and kind of looks cool. I mean, I dig it. I don't know if you do. But yeah, so that's one of the ways that I'm improving the strength on the slam duct. And as you can see, it's worked rather well on, on the real deal. 
So continuing that, uh, I've got to reinforce the center here, but just to demonstrate, if I try to do this, type in, what, five? Not even that, four? Yeah, so four. I could click OK, but that's, you know, that's not a huge amount of support. Uh, so what I actually like to do is make that a bit stronger. So we're going to click on that surface. We're going to click Extrude, and we're going to drag it down. Uh, six millimeters seems fine. Click OK. And we're going to select these corner parts again. Click Fill it. Type in four. And there we go. Click OK. And now you see what we've done. We've strengthened this center part, and we've still left enough space for the wires, the motor wires, to go through, which is really nice. A couple other things that we want to get into. If you remember the last video that I did, I don't like hard edges. They have a habit of being stress points. So I'm going to select these stress points on the outside here. Hold shift to select them. Scroll to the other side. Rotate to the other side. Select those points. And once again, we press the fillet tool. Type in one, two, three, five. Five looks nice. Click OK. We've now smoothed the outside edge here. And the only thing left for this side is, you know, once again, printers are famously bad at printing in midair. So this flat top surface needs to go. And the way I'm going to do that is using the chamfer tool. So let's select that edge, rotate around, hold shift and select this one and this one. And now all we got to do is chamfer. If we go to the modify tab here, the chamfer tool is just under fillet. But actually I really like the chamfer tool to be up here and there's a very easy way to do that. Once again, Sam, Sam Richard is the one that suggested I do this. There's these little three dots over here. So if we click that, I can then check pin to toolbar and suddenly the chamfer tool has appeared up on the toolbar, which is really nice. So I'm going to click that and we've already got the chamfer tool open. Let's zoom in and here we go. Let's type in an amount one, which failed. I pretty much knew that was going to fail because if you look at it, the size of that area is really small. So let's just try 0.2. Okay, that's kind of working. Let's go 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.8, too much, 0.7. So 0 0.7, there's still a bit of a lip. 7.2, 7.3, 7.4, 7.5, 7.5, 7.6, 7.7, 7.8, 7.9, 7.10, 7.11, 7.12, 7.13, 7.14, 7.15, 7.16, 7.17, 7.18, 7.19, 7.20, 7.21, 7.22, 7.23, 7.24, 7.25, 
to being there. In fact, we can find out exactly how close we are. Let's click on the inspect tool at the top over here. Select that top edge, select this edge, and it's measured it for us 0.3 millimeters away. So how does that help us? Well now, if I double click on the previous extrude function here, I can add 0.3 to the extrusion. So 1.3, which moves it closer, press OK, and it's failed again, but it's remembered which surface it is. I can type in 0 0.73, 0 0.7. Ooh, look at that. Ever so close, so close. So let's cancel that, go back to the extrude again. And we're gonna make this 1.25. Click OK. Oh, look at that. How nice is that? It looks like it's almost the same surface. In fact, it is very slightly different. There is a tiny gap there if you zoom in. But zoomed out, that looks that looks so nice, doesn't it? Oh, I'm like, I'm like cheering for myself here. This is terrible. I should not be doing this. I must be modest. All right. So now we got to deal with the inside lip. And the same thing goes here. But I have some extra concerns because that's incredibly close to where the prop is. So if I were to chamfer this, in fact, let's move the chamfer tool next to the fillet tool, drag and drop. Click chamfer, type in a number, 2.494549, Let's just say we're happy with that. If I click OK and zoom out, you'll now notice that that particular part that sticks up could actually hit the prop itself. So, before we actually chamfer it, I'm going to drag it down. Now we know that this chamfer was, let's double click this, it was 2.7. So let's undo that, Control Z to undo, Command Z, I guess, in Mac. And we're going to select these top surfaces. Hold Shift to select multiple, I keep saying that just in case. And we're going to press Extrude, but this time we're going to go down by 2 millimeters. Let's just minus 2.5 to be safe. Click OK. And now we can select our surfaces here. Press chamfer and type in 2.5. Or did I say 2.7? 9? 8? 5? 4? 2.749. <laughs> Done. Click OK. And now we've got our chamfered points on the inside, and oh, I forgot to, I forgot to do that uh, filleting on the edge. So we'll do that too. Let's select these. Easy, easy. It's actually that thing. Sam Richard just suggested that thing where you hold Shift on the middle button to kind of do this. I still like the view cube. It's a matter of habit because it always moves into predefined uh, positions, which is really nice. Anyway. So click fillet, two millimeters, five millimeters. Five millimeters is really nice, click OK. And this is what I would consider a finished slam duck design. And we're gonna click save, click OK. And that's, that's it. In fact, pretty much let's, let's take this body, right click and save as mesh, select the format as STL, in binary, preview the mesh if you feel like it, you don't need to, and then click OK. We're going to save it somewhere. Let's go to Reptile Cloud 149 Mods. We're going to call this Slammed Duct. Save. And we're pretty much done. Now, as promised, as the second part of this video, we're going to take the old duct design and we're going to modify that instead of starting from scratch. I like starting from scratch for various reasons. It's clean slate. It's like fresh installing windows on your computer. It just, it feels amazing once you've done it. Uh, but in this case, if you have an existing design and you're like, oh, I don't really want to draw everything again, then you can modify it. So what we're going to do is over here on the right, I have full duct. And what you want to do is right click that and click copy and it opens this dialog box so you can copy it to another folder. I'm just going to leave it in the same one. Click copy and it's going to make a duplicate over here. And it's just 
told you that item is copied successfully. It moves back. So which one is it? 307. This is the one that was just created. I'm going to right click that and we're going to rename it. We'll call it slammed duct bracket from original. And press enter. That's going to finish naming it. And we double click it to open. Oh, that's taking its sweet time. There we go. Now, if you're using Fusion 360 as a hobbyist, uh, you might get this. Basically, it's the documents read only because you have a limit on the total number of files that you're allowed to edit at any given time. So I've actually turned a lot of my files into read only, including the old duck design. I'm gonna click make editable. And now we're ready to actually modify this design. There are a couple things that are gonna disappear and become an issue as we modify this. So I'm gonna show you how to deal with that or realize what's going wrong. So the most obvious thing is to, first of all, shorten the total height of this. So let's go to our timeline and double click on the very first sketch. So we can see that this is our original duct shape. Now, if you recall, it was 13 millimeters off the ground, off the base that I made the last one. So I'm gonna draw a line upwards, type 13. And then we're gonna use that measurement, draw across. So that gives us the bottom of it. Trim tool to delete this section, this section, and that section. Once again, I've drawn two lines there, so I have to click twice. And now if we click finish, just to demonstrate. Uh, this has happened and that kind of looks hilarious. And you'll also notice that it's given us warnings that fillet one, two, chamfer one, two, three, etc. All of these have thrown an error because the change that we made in that first uh, step, in that first sketch, has affected all the operations that have followed, which is something that we need to deal with. And in this case, all these operations that were made can't be used anymore anyway. It's not like we can salvage them unless you get lucky. That depends on what you're doing. So what we're going to do, I'm going to click close here. And if you look at the timeline here, it's selected, it's highlighted in red and even yellow as a warning to tell you which parts are basically not working anymore. So again, holding shift, select them and press delete. That's gotten rid of all of them. And the last one here, this extrude, if I double click it, it's giving us a warning because a profile is missing. Ah, okay, so that was for the wire tunnel basically, which we don't need anymore. So I'm gonna click cancel. And so this sketch here and that extrusion here, I'm gonna select them, press delete, because we don't need them. And now we're left with the base features of our slammed duct. So how do we, how do we improve upon this? Well, first things first, I'd like to thicken the duct as I did with the last design uh, to improve the strength. So. Double click our first sketch, zoom in. And from this point, I'm gonna draw a line here. And basically, let's set that to 2.5 like we did earlier. We're gonna draw straight up. And again, to prove why, I'm just gonna draw straight up and click there and not really care because we can always use the trim tool to get rid of it. Also, this corner I don't need anymore. This smooth corner is not necessary. That one, we'll keep that for fun. And, oh, trim tool, let's get rid of that. So now we have our thicker profile. I'd still like to add that extra lip at the bottom. So let's click here, go 0.5, now let's go one millimeter, draw upwards by two, and then do the 45 degree angle up into here again. So 135 on the angle. Click, and then trim tool, trim that. Oh no, that didn't work. Uh, that means that line didn't actually properly intersect. So if that happens to you, let's undo that. Let's draw that line again. So click here and we're gonna press tab, 135 to hit the angle. And instead of trying to click it on the line, I'm gonna go straight through it like this. Click the trim tool and now you'll see I can trim there and trim that as well. So that's just something. If you ever find that you've clicked on a line and it hasn't quite joined for whatever reason, by all means, draw straight across it and then use the trim tool to, to sort it out. 
Back up here again, we're going to extend this down by a millimeter. Draw across, connect here. I'm gonna trim that off, trim that off. And now we get to do our filleting. Let's do two for that. No, not two, 1.5 is nice. Then we're gonna fill it this edge by one. And we're gonna fill it this edge by 0.5. Yeah, that's it. And click OK. Once again, we are left with roughly the shape that we just made earlier. OK, so we're doing pretty well. Now, these standoffs are not tall enough to join the top. So what I'm going to do is we're going to find. And this is the cool thing, right? If I go to this view, if you hover over a point, it's actually going to show you what that operation was by highlighting the edges that it created or the faces that it created. So I don't need to modify the holes, but I do want to modify the whole thing. So if I now double click, oh God, double click that extrude feature, I can now modify how high it went and retrospectively set it to 13. Click OK and just double check on the bodies folder that it indeed is one single body. And now we're basically at the point that we were before. So if, if you watch the last section, then you'll know exactly how to do this. If not, I'll just quickly go through and start doing it. All we got to do is create the smooth section. So just select these bottom edges over here, like so. And hopefully if I press fill it, I can type in 13. And there we go. We get our nice smooth points like that. Same deal here, if I only filleted that, it won't go that deep. So I'm gonna extrude this downwards by six, click OK, select the two edges inside, fill it, type in four, press OK, and now we've got our basic strong design. To sort out the flat edges like we did in the last bit, we're going to first of all work out, I think that was, I needed to extrude those ones upwards by about a millimeter. So we're going to select them, extrude by one. I'm going to select these top edges like so. I'm going to chamfer them by 0.2. No, it's not even 0.2, it's zero, like one. No, 0.5. Oh, my memory's so bad, 0.7. 749. Okay, good. And that's still not quite making it. I think that was a three, right? So if we double click the extrusion, I can type 1.3. It's failed. So, oh no, no, it was 1.25. Boom. Okay. That kind of works. Next one. These inner ones have to be extruded downwards by I think minus 2.5, something like that, which is yeah, we'll do 2.5, that's fine. Select these top edges and what was it? 2.5, 2.7, 9. Oh, I'm pushing my luck there. 7.49, there we go, 2.749. That's done and now we just gotta smooth these outer edges. So do the thing, ooh, scrolling around doing the shift middle click. It's actually a lot snappier than the view cube. I still like the view cube. I'm going to keep using it. Let's fill it that type in five, get it looking nice and smooth. Same for the inside. There we go. Select all the edges and fill it for the five. And there you have it. We have our slammed duct design. Same deal here. I get to press control S or command S to save. And if we export save as mesh, select STL. It's already done that for me. Click OK. And we're going to call it slammed duct brackets from original. STL. And that's basically it. Uh, 
I probably prefer the one that I made from scratch purely because I got to put in all the parameters um, manually and freshly. But at this point, all we got to do is open the Prusa slicer, Prusa slicer, and see how it looks. So let's add. This is the correct folder. Yes, it is. Slammed duct. Very good. Zoom in a bit. And where's the tool? Place on face because we're printing upside down. And then slice now. If we zoom in, you will now see this is actually more interesting than the, than the last one I previewed. If I drag this slider so we see all the layers going upwards, it starts small as usual. And then as we build up, it goes out at a 45 degree angle, smooths off, creates the lip, that's the edge of it, goes all the way up. And this is where it thickens. So this is the, the 2.5 millimeter wall, which becomes a 3.5 mil. And we can even see here, if we zoom in, the shape of the standoff as it builds upwards. Oh, that's really satisfying. I'm going to do that again. Watch this. Ooh, check it out. So, you know, this is just my going theory, but for me, I, I've done the duct design before and I've, uh, let's just export G code, save the G code. I've done this duct design before and without these filleted edges, it's so easy to break. It just snaps off. But when you have the filleted edge like this, there's just so much more meat, um, so much more plastic that's hanging on to the main part of the duct that it has to be stronger. Just, you know, logically, if you were to injection mold this, this would be a much stronger print than if you just had a solid stud there. And that's basically what this is all about. And I've flown it already. I've flown it in a villa. I've flown it at a hotel as a slammed configuration. And you know what? It doesn't fly that differently from a full size duct, but what it benefits from is not getting pushed around by the wind that much. So there's a lot more forward speed that I can carry and a lot more maneuverability. So it's that kind of sweet spot between full and bare, because I've also flown it bare at, at the beach and it's so fast without ducts on it. Uh, but you know, I, I don't need to go that fast. It is a Cinewoo after all, so that's kind of it. Anyway, that's, that's all, that's the whole shebang. So I'm pretty much done with ducts. I don't think I'm gonna do any more unless I decide to do a design for like a freestyle uh, quad, which will require a kind of frame which goes to the motor mounting bolts since there's no other mounting points. So, you know, I'll consider that. Maybe that will be the next video. But yeah, if you enjoyed this, if you liked it, please like, comment anything that I can improve, just like Sam Richard did. Uh, if you want to see improvements in my ability to use Fusion 360, then please put them down there. And subscribe if you want to see more. I'm thinking for my next project, I'd like to do a series on designing little bits like GoPro mounts and antenna mounts and GPS mounts. Antenna's not so much, but GPS mount, you know, I, I recently printed out of TPU this one. That's really, really strong and rigid, so that's kind of nice. And the GoPro mount here is also printed out of TPU. So yeah, if you want to see those, let me know, and I'll see you guys next time.